This video is 100% organic. And anytime you see this symbol in the bottom left hand of my reviews, it, it is there to tell you that I have no affiliation with camera companies. They have no input. They have no say. I am not taking a press trip or a camera camp. They are very common and popular. It means that I've paid for this camera with my own money. And this is 100% my own thoughts with nobody telling me what to do. So the reason why I'm making this video and I'm stating that I have no affiliation with Canon is because I have very high praise for the 90D in terms of ergonomics. It is not a perfect camera. There are some serious flaws that I've, I've found. I will post that video shortly if you're interested in, in knowing what those are. Hit that subscription bell and I will also try to tell you how I have fixed them. Okay, so there's some very important videos coming on the 90D as well as reviews in terms of its performance. Looking at the ergonomics only, there are two main things that I look for in the operation of a camera. And it gets a little bit nerdy and geeky. The main things I'm looking for are an increase in options and a decrease in the number of button presses that it takes to do something. The reason why I'm pointing this out and I'm making a video about this is Canon. I know you watch my videos. Learn some lessons from what you have done here. This is very, very good. Apply them, please, to the mirrorless cameras. When I say that, I'm talking about the M6 Mark II. I'm talking about the Canon M50. I'm talking about the Canon R and the Canon RP. I feel those cameras are not as usable. They're not user-friendly, and they prefer different user types, even talking about the left eye problem, which I've also posted a video about. So as a viewer, just know that I'm, I'm not anti-Canon, but I have no problem pointing out where there are problems, and this video is mostly going to be praised because I want Canon to include these features in their upcoming mirrorless cameras. It's gonna make the operation of future cameras better. Number one, the most important thing that has happened is the addition of the joystick. And it doesn't sound like a big deal because we've, we've had this joystick on the higher end 5D series cameras, on the 1DX series, obviously the 7D, 7D Mark II. The joystick was even there, believe it or not, way back in 2000, I think it was 7, 2008 with the Canon 40D. The Canon 50D had a joystick and they removed it in the 60D for this directional pad type of operation. The reason why the joystick is so important is because we have an optical viewfinder that relies on a focusing array built just below the mirror box, which means this is designed to be a great sports shooting camera at 10 frames per second. Without the joystick, this becomes a real problem in terms of changing your focusing squares in the viewfinder. And on those mirrorless cameras I just mentioned, Canon wants us to use the back monitor by touching and dragging on it while looking through the viewfinder to change the, the focusing squares on those EVFs, for example. The problem with this is if you're left eye dominant, your nose hits the screen and you're ch constantly changing those focusing squares. So for those mirrorless cameras, I've been saying they're, they're right eyed cameras for right eyed shooters. And if you go on and you look at the statistics of it, about 33% of all shooters are left eye to dominant. So they're alienating a good portion of their potential market. By making a camera for right eyed shooters, uh, a lot of left eyed shooters are not going to be happy with it. This resolves it. That joystick. Many of you are going to say, well, that's not really a big deal. Joysticks have been around for a while. And that's true. Panasonic has had a joystick with an articulating touchscreen monitor. But when we look at Canon cameras, which has an outstanding articulating touchscreen monitor, I can rotate this out and face it you know, towards the camera for video shooting. This combination of the articulating monitor, touchscreen, very nice, with the joystick makes the Canon a very powerful tool when we're talking about doing multiple things. This is a Goldilocks camera. It does everything really, really well. It's not a specialist like the Sony A7R Mark IV, which is a high resolution camera. This is a do-it-all camera. So let me talk about some of the examples of so many different ways that you can change your camera settings. We can use the optical viewfinder and change our primary and secondary exposure settings here, but we can also come in to the Q menu and change it using the back monitor. 
We can also change our exposure settings using Live View. So there's three different ways right off the bat, depending on your shooting style and preference, you can change your exposure settings. We can change most of our options from this single Q screen in Live View, or if we wanted to use this Q screen on the black screen, we could do that as well, or we can use the dedicated controls on the top of the camera, AF drive, ISO metering, many different ways to change and control our camera settings. Canon has done this in the past where if we want to skip pressing a button to get to changing our focusing squares, we can do so here. If we want to remove focus from a halfway shutter button, we can do it here. When we looked at the Canon R, there was a problem with the mode dial and we see that analog mode dial back here again. This is, this is the way it should be. Canon, you, every, I think everybody agrees. This is far easier than needing to press three buttons to change your mode dial. Power switch, look how small and easy this is instead of losing all that real estate that we, we had on the R. Start and stop, live view, video recording, one press. That's all it should take. So the speed and the ease of use on the Canon 90D, articulating touchscreen monitor, joystick, Look at the number of button presses that we have with just our thumb. We have nice tension control here. It's perfect, I believe. The grip is deep and meaty. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 different controls just with our thumb. When we look at the ISO button on top, it's dimpled. The reason why that's done is so you, you have an orientation of your control buttons as you're looking through the viewfinder. So you don't have to take your eye away from the viewfinder to change your ISO or to change your clusters. That button's been around for a while actually, but you know, just hitting your cluster button, we can toggle through them. Look at the locks that Canon's included. We have a lock button here. If, we, if we're constantly bumping our secondary controller, we can lock it and there's a number of other controls we can program to that. We also have a lock up here on the mode dial. So we don't bump it as well. So Canon's trying to have these built-in controls from accidentally hitting things. It is very well designed. I am pretty happy with it in terms of the ergonomics and the use. And it, this also just goes to prove I'm not a Canon hater. I'm a big fan of Canon. But they have done a lot of things very, very well. I'll have another video coming out about some of the functional problems it's having. But this is a really great all-round camera so far. I'll have some heavy testing in terms of the video, the buffering, all that other stuff, you know, sports shooting, things of that nature. In terms of ergonomics, I would probably give it like an A minus. There's only a couple things that I don't like. I, I believe the power button in a perfect world would be around the shutter button like we see on Sony and Nikon cameras. I think it's great. Same with the lens release. I think it should be right ring finger. So you can grab the camera with one hand and take the lens off. But overall, this is a very ergonomic, highly usable cam camera. I think the shooting experience of new users is going, it's going to smooth things out when they're first learning the camera. And so Canon, well done. Pretty please incorporate certain principles of this on your future mirrorless cameras. And it would be a real ben benefit to everybody. If you're a brand new Canon 90D user, be sure to check out my free tutorial on YouTube. I'll put the link at the end of this video as well as in the description. It's two and a half hours of free training. It'll acquaint you with your camera. In any event, those are my thoughts on the ergonomics and usability. I think Canon, it's a home run. You, you did a great job. I would love, love, love to see certain elements <laughs> like this joystick included on future mirrorless cameras. It would make a huge difference to us left-eyed shooters. I'm not ripping on you. I'm just giving you some good feedback here. In any event, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.